Hello and welcome to Ask PC Mag, where our tech experts answer your tech questions. I'm Dan Costa, editor in chief of PC Mag, and I'm joined today by John Burek, who runs our hardware team, which means he runs all the laptop and desktop reviews. John, thanks for joining me. Hey, happy to be here, Dan. We've got a very important question today. Uh, we've got a user that wants to know how much RAM is enough for a new laptop. Enough RAM is relative in a couple of ways. Um, it depends, first of all, what class of laptop you're talking about and also what operating system of laptop you're talking about. There's a couple of um, possibilities there. You've got Chromebooks, you've got regular laptops, you've got Macs, right? And each of those has sort of its own set of considerations. So let's start with Chromebooks. Uh, they're kind of the easy one. Um, tend to be relatively inexpensive, most of them. Um, Chrome OS is a very light OS, pretty much just running a browser and apps inside of a browser. Um, most of the machines you're going to see out there have two gigs or four gigs of main system memory. And if you're used to buying Windows machines, either desktop or laptop, that sounds like not very much. Um, these days, most Windows machines come with eight gigs. But actually, that's generally fine for a Chromebook. The only time you're going to see Chromebooks above four gigs are sort of premium models that are meant, for, say, for business users. They might come with eight gigs, and those... You're really only going to see uh, an advantage to that if you're doing a lot of multitasking. You've got tons of tabs open or doing a lot of things at the same time. So that's Chromebooks. Basically, two gigs is sort of your budget. You know, sort of pick four gigs is sort of what you want to aim for and what you'll see in most of the mainstream ones, and that's fine, even if it doesn't sound like it relative to Windows machines. So then Windows machines. Um, you will still see some out there with four gigs. Um, those are going to be your bare budget models, or maybe you might be looking at like a refurb or something older. But eight gigs is sort of the baseline, even for budget machines uh, under 500 bucks at this point. And for most folks, eight gigs is fine. What about, and are, do you, are there different RAM recommendations for Macs versus Windows machines? Um, I would just say it comes down to what you're doing with the machine. I mean, if you're a mainstream user, you know, buying a Mac just for everyday stuff, the eight gigs, which is standard um, across almost all the SKUs at this point, is fine. Um, the thing is, is not everybody, of course, who buys a Mac is going to be running Premiere or Photoshop, but a lot of people who buy Macs buy them because they want to do content creation stuff. And if they do, that's where you want to start looking at the recommendation of the uh, software that you have. Um, most folks who are doing, you know, that heavy sort of content creation stuff will want to go for 16 gigs. You will, you know, see a benefit from that. Going beyond 16 gigs, for the most part, you know, it really depends on how serious you are and sort of what sort of software you're running, but most folks are going to be fine with 16 gigs running, say, like a Premiere or a um, Photoshop, you know, as a single program, you know, sort of day in, day out. Is there a point where the, the, the RAM maxes out and that the operating system, the application, is, it doesn't matter how much RAM you have, they're just not going to be able to take advantage of that extra RAM? Yeah, I mean, it, there are only, you know, a few programs that really will take much advantage over 16 gigs on sort of a sustained basis. Um, the If you're talking, for instance, about like games, like PC games, um, PC games are optimized for a certain amount of memory and sort of other processing um, resources that you're going to have. And you sort of have to write the software to accommodate what the mass of people are going to have. So adding more RAM, for instance, beyond eight gigs, you know, for a PC game in the most in most cases is not going to gain you much of anything. Um, where more RAM over 8 gigs will come in is, again, if you have a content creation program, if you're doing a lot of multitasking. So if you tend to have, you know, bazillion tabs open, run a lot of programs at the same time, your tab hygiene is bad and you don't close, you know, your tabs a lot, more RAM will be, be more RAM will be better. Um, but for the most part, you're not going to see a lot of benefit beyond 16 gigs. That's one of the best parts of working from home is seeing everybody's screens and you can tell who has really bad tab hygiene uh, when they're sharing their browser windows. So the other reason why this is a really important question is because once you buy your laptop, chances are that that's the RAM that you're going to have for the life of that laptop, right? Yep. Yeah, that's right. I mean, uh, not in every case. Um, you will still find machines, and generally they are of the power class of machines, like gaming machines or, you know, sort of high-end, thick workstation power laptops. Those you might be able to open up a hatch on the bottom or actually pry off the bottom and uh, change out the memory. But more and more, especially with thin machines, um, you're seeing, you know, sort of single bottom designs that you really aren't meant to crack open. And even if you can crack them open, sometimes the RAM, uh, in the interest of keeping the system thin, is soldered onto the motherboard. Because if you um, have the RAM in sort of the conventional way, where it's in a slot, you know, sort of what's called an SODIM, it's like sort of a short module that sort of mounts laterally to the motherboard... Um, it still adds a little bit of thickness because you have these sort of spring retraction mechanism and sort of a, a carrier for the memory. When it's soldered on the board, that enables the laptop manufacturer to go that much thinner. But then again, you're also out of luck if you want to upgrade. 
So that's a good thing to know, actually, when you're buying a laptop, is to see if the upgrade is only at time of purchase or is, you know, um, something you could do later. Other thing to think about, too, is there are very seldom empty slots inside of a laptop, even if you can upgrade it. So you're going to be taking out the RAM that's in there and replacing it with something larger capacity to make it work. So, yeah, always the advice is get what you need up front because you know, you'll regret it later if you have to upgrade it, both from the point of view of maybe you can't or you know, you're going to have to buy that RAM a second time. Always great advice, John. Thanks so much for doing this. And that's Ask PC Mag for today. If you've got more questions for us, you can ask us on Twitter, on Facebook, on Instagram. Just use the hashtag AskPCMag. And until then, we'll see you on PCMag.com.